right friends welcome back to banking awareness this is 11th lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss about uh, msme development act of 2006 what is the bifurcation for uh, micro small and medium enterprises and at the same time we are going to discuss about uh, priority sector lending what is meant by priority sector lending and uh, what are the recent guidelines or at present guidelines of a priority sector lending and before going into these let us look at this slide in a nutshell banking operations first is we deposit money in the bank subsequently banks have to keep certain reserves in the form of crr and slr how much reserves are required that will be decided based on the reserve bank of india monetary policy and after keeping these reserves aside banks can give loans and at the same time they can make investments and out of the loans to be given by the banks certain percentage are to be given for priority sector lending certain percentage are to be given to priority sector lending and remaining money they can give to whomever they want right so today's main topic is uh, priority sector lending but i would like to explain you about uh, msmes because quite often we talk about uh, this msmes what is the bifurcation msmes are uh, micro small and medium enterprises they are bifurcated as per msme d act of 2006 MSME D means Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Development Act of 2006. Based upon the investment, they are bifurcated, and the main bifurcation is between manufacturing and services. The main bifurcation is between manufacturing and services. Manufacturing means if I am producing. this item this is manufacturing if i am producing this item this comes under manufacture or production of goods manufacture or production of goods but if i am developing some software and if i am establishing a coaching center for uh, computers if i am establishing a center which upgrades the skills of the people they all comes under services manufacturing of goods is this services is something different services means all of you are well aware education health hospitality all these things will comes under services that means no physical production of goods is involved if somebody is establishing a computer center to train the students that is services so the main classification under msme d act is manufacturing and services and separate category exists for each micro small and medium enterprises and in the classification the cost of land and buildings is not included in the classification the cost of land and buildings is not included and if you look at the manufacturing or production of goods the categorization is like this micro enterprises investment in plant and machinery up to rupees 25 lakhs investment in plant and machinery up to rupees 25 lakhs if i want to produce this i have to establish plant and machinery that investment if it is up to rupees 25 lakhs that is micro enterprise if the cost of plant and machinery is more than rupees 25 lakhs and up to rupees of 5 crores it is a small enterprise and if the cost of plant and machinery is more than 5 crores of rupees and up to rupees 10 crores it is a medium enterprise this is the manufacture or production of goods is concerned if you look at the services services means i have already told you some learning center for that it involve cost of equipment if i want to start a computer learning center i have to bring computers so that is cost of equipment so for the services sector 
the cost of equipment will be the basis and for micro enterprise the cost of equipment should not exceed rupees 10 lakhs and for small enterprise the cost of equipment is between above rupees 10 lakhs right up to rupees 2 crores and for a medium enterprise it should be above rupees 2 crores right up to 5 crores so this bifurcation please don't forget separate for manufacturing enterprise as well as services enterprise and the categorization of micro small and medium is based on the cost of plant and machinery in case of manufacturing sector the cost of equipment in case of services sector but in both the cases it does not include the cost of land and buildings and let us come to the topic uh, priority sector lending what is priority sector lending in a nutshell i would like to tell you if there are no stipulations who will give loan to a small farmer if there are no government regulations let us assume a situation government has not given any regulations government has not given any rules in such a case please assume who will give loan to a small farmer who will give a loan to a poor woman who will give loan to a scheduled caste artisan normally banks do not entertain so the priority sector lending guidelines are brought so as to take care of disadvantaged sections of society that is the farmers, small artisans, weaker sections, women, self-help groups and if there are no regulations or no rules and regulations devised then no bank will come forward to give loans to these disadvantaged sections. So priority sector refers to the sectors of the economy which may not get a timely and adequate credit in the absence of any regulation if there are no rules and regulations probably they will not get adequate and timely credit and if you look at it from different perspective priority sector lending constitutes small value loans they do not run into hundreds of crores they are small value loans to agriculture and allied sectors. MSMEs, we have just now discussed what is MSMEs, not the big corporates, not the big enterprises. They are MSMEs, small enterprises, micro enterprises and medium enterprises. Then export credit, exports are to be pushed so that our economy will be stable. That's why export credit is also included in priority sector lending. Then uh, social infrastructure. In rural areas, if somebody is building schools, hospitals, they should be supported. Then uh, renewable energy. If somebody is establishing some solar plant, if somebody is establishing the solar panels, that is renewable energy, they should be supported. So, these are all comes under priority sector lending and please don't forget weaker sections also comes under priority sector lending. So, the priority sector lending refers to the sectors of the economy which require timely and adequate credit from the banking system. Right now, historical perspective. All of you are well aware the nationalization of banks took place in the year 1969. Subsequently, this uh, priority sector conceived in the year 1972. Initially, it was thought that agriculture and uh, small scale industries have to be given impetus and accordingly, in the year 1974, banks were advised to draw up plans to make available at least 33 one third percent that means at least one third of the total credit to be given to agriculture and small scale industries by the year 1979. That means 33 one third percent of total advances to be given 
by 1979 that is within 5 years subsequently in the year 1980 based on ks the krishna swami committee recommendations this priority sector guidelines or the priority sector lending was increased to 40% by 1985 that means in the year 1980 banks were advised to give or to increase the priority sector lending to 40% by the year 1985 subsequently committee on financial systems headed by narasimhan in the year 1991 suggested that priority sector lending should be brought down to 10% but government has not accepted it and subsequently mb nayar committee was also associated with certain recommendations with regard to priority sector lending and in between different guidelines were issued and the recent guidelines pertain to april 2015 in the month of april 2015 rpa gave revised guidelines and as per the revised guidelines i would like to tell you the major changes which were brought as per the 2015 revised guidelines first and the foremost is medium enterprises were brought under priority sector lending previously micro and small enterprises were part of priority sector lending but the medium enterprises were also brought second thing is the social infrastructure and renewable energy are also included what is social infrastructure social infrastructure is provision of essential amenities to the people of the country is a social infrastructure if somebody is constructing a hospital in a rural area if somebody is constructing a school in a rural area that is a social infrastructure or socially relevant project renewable energy if somebody is establishing solar panel on his house if somebody is coming forward with a big solar panel so he has to give impetus to renewable energy if somebody is coming up with a windmill that is a renewable energy so these are three sectors medium enterprises social infrastructure and renewable energy are brought under the framework of priority sector lending previously there was distinction between direct agriculture and indirect agriculture now that was a shelved there is no more distinction between direct and indirect agriculture it was dispensed with second thing is lending to agriculture includes farm credits that means credit to farmers second is agriculture infrastructure what is meant by agriculture infrastructure if somebody is making a warehouse somebody is making a cold storage facility because a lot of wastage is taking place in the farm products in our country in our country lot of wastage is taking place in farm products and to prevent that wastage if some entrepreneur is constructing cold storage facility then that comes under priority sector lending if somebody is constructing the warehouse for storage of agriculture produce that comes under priority sector lending third one is ancillary activities that means if somebody is producing tomatoes and if he want to establish a plant to produce the juice or a sauce out of tomato if some farmer wants to produce the sauce out of a tomato then he will be financed and that will come under priority sector lending please don't forget priority sector lending limits or the limits given for categorization under priority sector lending and there is no bar banks can give more loans also but subject to the limit they will be classified under priority sector lending right so the priority sector lending now includes agriculture msmes export credit education up to some limit housing up to some limit social infrastructure renewable energy and others and what percentage banks are required to give to priority sector 40% of their adjusted net bank credit i am not going into much detail of adjusted net bank credit because 
that is the technical term that adjusted net bank credit is arrived at after taking into account loans and investments so total 40% of adjusted net bank credit should go to priority sector lending all the banks whether they are indian banks or foreign banks all the banks should ensure priority sector lending of 40% to the nominated sectors and i would like to tell you foreign banks having 20 or more branches have to ensure 40% target by 2018 and foreign banks less than 20 branches have to ensure priority sector lending targets by march 2020 what about uh, the details when you go into the details within 18% there is a sub target of 18% to agriculture out of 40% total loans 18% should go to agriculture and out of 18% to agriculture they have to give 8% to small and marginal farmers you may ask what is the differentiation between marginal farmer and small farmer the farmer having the land up to 1 hectare 1 hectare means 2 and 1/2 acres so the farmers having a land or owning land up to 1 hectare or 2 and 1/2 acres are considered as marginal farmers and 1 to 2 hectares that means about 2 and 1/2 acres and up to 5 acres are categorized under small farmers so 8% of the loans should go to small and marginal farmers and 7% is to be ensured by march 2016 8% is to be ensured by march 2017 second important stipulation is 7.5% of the target is kept for micro enterprises we have just now discussed what is the differentiation between micro small and medium enterprises and here 7 and 1/2 percent of total loans should go to micro enterprises and 7% is to be ensured by march 2016 7 and 1/2 percent is to be ensured by march 2017 right and if you look into the details about this priority sector guidelines loans to individuals for housing in metropolitan areas where the population is 10 lakhs and above the limit is 28 lakhs that means loans in metropolitan centers for housing given up to rupees 28 lakhs will be classified under priority sector lending about 28 lakhs also banks can give there is no bar but loans up to 28 lakhs are categorized under priority sector lending and in other centers loans up to rupees 20 lakhs will be categorized under priority sector lending but the overall cost of house should not exceed 35 lakhs in metropolitan centers and 25 lakhs in other centers at the same time for repairs if someone wants to undertake repairs up to rupees 5 lakhs in metropolitan centers and up to rupees 2 lakhs in other centers will be categorized as priority sector lending and other important aspect is for building social infrastructure that means schools healthcare centers drinking water facilities entire two to tier 6 centers we have previously discussed what is the meaning of tier 2 to tier 6 centers and entire two to tier 6 centers that means up to the population less than 1 lakh in places up to population less than 1 lakh they are categorized as tier 2 to tier 6 centers in tier 2 to tier 6 centers if someone is constructing a hospital if someone is constructing a school or someone is providing drinking water facilities loans up to rupees 5 crore will come under priority sector lending similarly for renewable energy loans up to 15 crore will come under priority sector lending the allied activities under agriculture involves dairying fishery animal husbandry poultry bee keeping and sericulture these are also considered as allied activities under agriculture 
and loans to farmers up to rupees 50 lakhs against the pledge or hypothecation of agricultural produce will also come under priority sector lending if you look at agricultural infrastructure for construction of uh, warehouses for construction of uh, cold storage facilities up to rupees 100 crores of loan will come under priority sector lending uh, look at education loans to individuals for educational purposes uh, including vocational courses uh, up to rupees 10 lakh will come under priority sector lending and loans not exceeding rupees 50000 per borrower provided directly by banks to individuals and their self help groups will also come under priority sector lending provided the annual income in rural areas should not exceed rupees 1 lakh and in urban areas it should not exceed rupees 1 lakh 60000 and for weaker sections 10% credit should go to weaker sections and what are weaker sections is classified here they are the small and marginal farmers artisans Beneficiaries of differential rate of interest scheme, we have already discussed about a DRI scheme. Individual women beneficiaries up to 1 lakh per borrower, persons with disabilities, minority communities, self-help groups, these are all coming under weaker sections category, right? So, we discussed in detail about this priority sector lending and in the next class that is module number 12, we are going to discuss in detail about this non-performing assets. So, please do join for 12th module. Have a nice day. Thank you.